Thank you, Bernadette. Um, I will be speaking in French. Um, so, alors, je vais essayer. I'll try to speak here with the perspective of different registers in mind. We have five general registers that manage the networks, and these are fundamental elements for the functioning of the internet, for the teams that are connected to the internet. These registers do not decide themselves how these addresses are being managed, but this decision comes from a consensus that is created by the users, the operators, and by the community at large through a growing consensus related to the development of management policies. So as registers, we're at the heart of the policies that we're discussing here today. And IPv4, the protocol that Okay, seems like we are having a... Can you hear the mic from the English booth? Transcripts in English, so I will probably switch to English. Huh? Hello, hello, can you hear the English booth? Good. Um, so I was saying that... Um, as uh, regional internet registry, we uh, face and the, 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 the reality of the exertion of IPv4 addresses uh, because we uh, know, we are seeing how uh, the pool is shrinking and we are also seeing how the IPv6 uh, take up is, is happening. So what is the real, the real problem here? Um, 10 years ago, um, study study already shows that uh, uh, IPv4 will exhaust it, internet will grow, and there were assumptions at that time that when IPv4 will exhaust it, IPv6 will have sufficiently take up so that there will be no issue, and that's why IPv6 has been defined 10 years allow operator to move to that new protocol. But what really is happening today is that, yes, internet has grown. Yes, IPv4 is exhausting. This is, has not been implemented by network operators, has not taken up. So uh, the question is, well, what will happen really when we will in that period where IPv6 Okay, so what will happen really during that transition period where IPv4 will exhaust it and IPv6 will be taking up? Um, what will really be the situation? There are several approaches, several speculation in that area. And what is interesting is also for developing policy in various area region, uh, there are a lot of discussion among the community to define policy that will uh, soften as much as possible this transition period. Two issues have been addressed by, 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 by the area community. First is how to make IPv6 allocation um, easy for operator, how to help them, how to support them, which policy do we need? That's one, one aspect. A second aspect which is being addressed through the policy development process is how can we make sure that when the trap pool of the IPv4 address will exhaust it, we still have the ability to allow newcomer to have uh, uh, at least a minimum IP address to start up their network? 
while transi transitioning to IPv6. So those issues have been addressed in various um, uh, policy development area and shows how uh, the community is reacting to this uh, specific issue. So today we will try to raise different aspects of the issue in this panel and um, be, be able to address them from different perspective uh, vendors and um, I will be giving some perspective on uh, what is um, the status of the deployment just to give a number about 15 percent uh, globally of, of, of network uh, IPVC is ready or are doing something about IPVC today so you can see from there that there's a vast majority of network which are still uh, using IPV4 address and we uh, are envisaging that the two protocol IPv4 and IPv6 will coexist for a very long period of time before IPv6 will take over IPv4. So I will stop here for now um, and... Um All right. Thank you, Adil. Could you... Is there a, project, a projection based on the current rate of allocation of IPv4 in terms of when this exhaust is most likely to come about? Yeah. Um, there are several studies uh, done to try to anticipate when we will run out of the central pool of IPv4, and um, globally it's, it's around 2011, 